Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's another week of Come On CFL presented by Come On Now, the podcast partnered with Bet99 Sports. You are rocking with Nikki T, three time, not one, not two, but three time Great Cup champion of the CFL. It's another great week. It's Labor Day weekend. They say the season don't start until Labor Day weekend, but guess what? Labor Day weekend is here, so the season has started. So throw out all the records and everything you've done before. This is when the season gets real. This is when the weather starts to change and the men become men. They ball out. They do what they got to do to get their team to the Grey Cup. Grey Cup's in BC this year. Who's going to be there? BC's not looking too good. But we're going to dive into that a little later. Right now, we're going to dive into what happened last week. Last week, we start off with Sask in Toronto. Chad Kelly is back. And started off a little shaky, but ultimately, he got things going. And all of a sudden... He looked like he has good receivers on his team. With him as the quarterback, throwing the ball and spreading the ball around, DeMonte Coxey is back doing the things that he was doing last year. Who knew all he needed was a quarterback that could push the ball down the field? And now they're a whole different team. They pull out that game with a rouge at the end. And if you don't like it, get your t- get a first down when you got a chance. Get in better field position. This is what the CFL is, the rules. It's been here for a long time. Can we change it? Maybe. I'll dive into that a little later. But right now, this is what happened. It's a field position game. It's a special team game. It matters. And the rules are, if they kick the ball out the end zone and miss the field goal, you get a point. This is what it is. You don't like it? Don't let them get the ball back in great field position in order to be able to miss a field goal that don't make it that make it out the end zone. As simple as that. So, Saz, another loss. They're reeling right now. Trevor Harris, not a great game. Couple of interceptions, under 200 yards. They don't get it done. They up, and Toronto finds a way to come back in the game and, and win it, pull it off. Next game, we go to Hamilton, Winnipeg. A ugly game. Ugly game by the offense. Both quarterbacks did not play really well. Zach Caleros, three interceptions. Um, Bo Levi, pretty pedestrian himself, but they still found a way to get up 26 points and 23 points respectively by both teams. Um, Winnipeg find a way to dig down deep, come at, come back at the end of the game, and they get the win. And the end of the day, is all about wins. How, how you get it doesn't matter as long as you get those two points and you continue the train rolling. And that's what Winnipeg is doing right now. They battle their way back from an 0-4 record, and now they're 5-6, and and they're at the top of the division with 10 points, 5 wins. Everybody have 5 wins, them, Sass, and BC Lions. And we got Calgary right below them, and we got Edmonton just looking in, seeing what's going on. Can they get in the party? And that's what's going on right there. Winnipeg pulls it off. At the end of the game, Zach played like crap most of the game. But the last possession, he gets the job done. He drives them down the field. They score a touchdown. It's over. They pull it off. Next game we're going to, we got BC versus Ottawa. 34-27, Ottawa in Ottawa. They have a rematch game coming up this week. Drew Brown just downright spectacular. He's been balling all year when he hasn't been hurt. But when he's been on the field, he's been magnificent. He's turned around the Ottawa team this year. He was the one piece they needed to be back as a relevant team in the CFL. Also, they needed to make changes on their defense. They needed to give up less big plays, and they're doing that this year. And that's leading them to the record that they have right now, 7-2. and two. And they're right behind Montreal, 7-2-1. and two and one. They're right there. They're back in the East. They're looking to make a playoff berth since the first time in a few years. Shout out to them. Let's get it going. They keep it rolling. Bobby, Coach Dice, I love it. I love what you're doing to the team. You're turning around. You got them believing. And they're believing they can win every game, and that's what they're going out to do. They think they're not the underdogs anymore. They are the big dogs. And everybody else is just the cats, and that's what they're doing right now. They're rolling. Good job by Ottawa. They come out with a win. Nathan Rourke, another game. It's only two weeks. 
you know, hasn't been able to practice much with his team, but he has a pretty, you know, it's an okay game, 22 for 31. If you look at the numbers, 234 yards, a pick. They get some points up, but he's just not reading the defenses as fast as he was before. He's a little slow at the ball, he, and that comes with practice, and you don't just throw a quarterback in there with no practice for the most part and think that he's just going to take over and, and get the team going to where you want them to go ultimately. And their defense is trash. They've been playing really bad. They have a whole bunch of holes and leaks. Their D-line is not a good D-line. It's been their calling card for a long time, but they had Matthew Betts before, and he was at least able to get sacks and pressures and, and some big fumbles and change the game. But as a whole, their D-line, their whole defense, their secondary, they're just not good. They're not getting it done. They started off hot, and now it's looking real bad. And now I'm starting to wonder what's going on in that locker room. Did this divide the team by bringing work in? I know it did. You know, I don't have to. I don't have to guess. I know it did. It changed things around the whole team, the chemistry. The chemistry is off. And you can say, well, they lost the game before, you know, VA got hurt and he played bad. And against Winnipeg, they under 100 yards, total offense. But you can't forget what they did at the beginning of the season. I don't think the league has caught up fully to them. But I do think that the team, everybody's, somebody's, on Rourke's side and somebody's on VA's side, and that's not a good thing to have on a team trying to win games. And VA's out. He's still out. So, you know, he's taking his time with his injury because they got Rourke. But ultimately, when he comes back, there will be a decision that needs to be made. It has to be made because he what he was doing at the beginning of the year was MOP worthy. And right now, what Rourke is doing, he has to battle back from what everybody remember of that great season that he had in 2021. But he's been away for two years, two and a half years. And now you just throw him back in the fire. That's hard to do. I don't care who you are. But as a quarterback, when you get no preseason reps, when you get no, you know, the the whole preseason of practicing and, and, and things with your receivers, and, and it's a new group of receivers, a couple of new players like now, Alexander Hollins has been a forgotten man. I don't, he, he's not the same player he was before. And you can see that VA was his guy. He came back the first game, work was back. He wore a VA shirt. That's telling you some things. And now he's kind of looking like he's phased out of the offense. Hatchet came back. Hatcher came back, but, and McKinnis was always balling the, the whole year. But now, Alexander Hollins, who was a leading receiver, Leading the league in yards for the most part with him and his and his teammate McGinnis, he's relegated to two catches to eighteen yards. The week before last, I don't even think he had I think he had one or something like that. And the game against Winnipeg before that, he had two weeks against Winnipeg. He's been getting nothing. He's been invisible. And for this team to work, they need all three of those receivers to be a big part of the game plan. Hollins, Hatcher, McGinnis. And I could throw, my, I could throw. Um, what's my guy? Big receiver, Javon, Javon, Petoy. You could throw him in there too. He has to be a vital part. When their offense was rolling last year, he was a vital part. He caught short passes and he was tough to bring down. He got first downs for them. And now he's been forgot about him. He's got hurt. He's been hurt for a few weeks, but when he's in, their offense. It's not the same. And the quarterback change is a big part of it. And they're actually getting a run game going this year, which was a big problem. You thought once they get the running game going with their aerial attack, that they would be hard to beat. And that's what it looked like early in the season. But now you're like, damn, with the Great Cup NBC, they don't look like they're going to be there. And if they keep falling like this, they won't be there. And that's just the bottom line. So they better find themselves. They better make some changes on their defense. And they better make it fast because they are they already lost their lead in the division. And now they already have the – they're not – they don't have the tiebreaker over Winnipeg. So they're in third place and they're falling. Who knows what's going to happen with Calgary, you know, with these next couple games they have against Edmonton. They'll be right back in it or they can't be or Edmonton could be right back in it. 
not bad, but shoot. At the end of the day, Ottawa's been playing great. Let's give a good shout out to Drew Brown. He should be an MOP consideration right now. When he plays, he's playing darn well. Nine touchdowns, five interceptions. A lot of yards over the whole season when he does play. Big thing, got to keep him healthy, upright, healthy, and the sky's the limit for that Ottawa team against Montreal. Oh, and Toronto. I can't lead them out. They've been, they're hanging in there and they get their quarterback back. Next game we're going to go to is Edmonton versus Montreal. 21 to 17, Montreal. They are just the best team in the league. They have something special going on over there. This reminds me of when I played with Winnipeg. Um, for a couple of years, we didn't give a damn. We just knew that nobody could beat us. You could have us beat most of the game, and we're still laughing and joking around like, yeah, <laughs> we're going to get y'all. We're just better than y'all, and we know it. And we are so good offensively, defensively, and special teams, all three phases of the game where we play comp- complementary football, that we're not worried. You could have us down 15, 20 points, and we are confident in ourselves that we're going to come back. And that's what Montreal is looking like the whole year. Every game, they have found a way in the worst scenarios to battle back, battle back, battle back. And that happened again against Edmonton. Edmonton has the game in control. And then Montreal scores the last 15 points of the game. And they get Cody back. And Cody's struggling early in the game, struggling, struggling, trying to find his rhythm, trying to find his rhythm. And then in the second half, he found it. Him and Cole Speaker was a big play after big play, after big play, Cole Speaker finished over 100 yards. Cody make a couple of big throws. Touchdown here. Cole Speaker get his feet down, and the defense just lock in in the second half. Zero points again. Another game where they just go lights out in the second half. Like, we're done playing around with you guys. No more. And But Edmonton still has a chance to win this game. At the end of the game, McLeod Bethel played well. I'm not going to talk crap about him. He played well this game. But at the end of the game, you have a chance to win it. And you're getting close to the end zone. There's no way you don't throw the ball to big Geno Lewis. I don't care if it's two people guarding him. He has the ability to come down with the ball over two people. And you throw the ball short of the end zone, five, six, seven, eight yards on the last play. When I'd rather go to Geno and we'll live with the results. That's the guy we're paying all the money to. Come down with the ball. Shit, that's what we paid you to do. Come down with the ball. We're going to throw it up to you. And maybe we get a pass interference. At the, and we get to the one yard line and we sneak it in. And we, we sneak up out of Montreal with a win. But that's not what they did. Situational football. We win games with situational football. When you need to make the plays in those moments and be smart in those moments, you have to find a way to do it. That's what the good teams do. And Edmonton's been playing well. Kudos to them. But that would have been a big game if they stole it in Montreal. Now look at your confidence. You're feeling real good about the season. Now you're like, hey, we're good enough to make a run at this thing. We get Calgary, Calgary back to back. Who knows? We beat them twice. And we're right back in the picture in BC sliding. We can get the third, the third seed in the West, go on the road, and all you got to do is get to the party, bring your dancing shoes. And see what happened. You, you, you tap the cute girl in the club, and maybe she she give you the dance. Maybe she give you her phone number. Who knows how the night turns out? But you got to get to the party. <laughs> if you don't get to the party, it means nothing. So that's what we got for last week's game. Nick's power rankings. We're going to dive right into that. Nick power rankings at number nine, obviously, Hamilton. At number eight, we're going to keep Calgary there, four and six, five week. Big week coming up, Labor Day weekend. Edmonton back to back. Got to have it. They're number eight, number seven. BC, they drop, they drop, they drop. I can't believe in a team that hasn't won in forever. They're on a slide, five-game slide. I can't rock with that right now. Nothing about that is good. Power ranking is mean what you've been doing. They have been doing diddly squat lately, so I keep them at seven. Edmonton at six. They've been playing well. They almost snuck out of Montreal with a win. Number five is Saz, five and five. They've been on the slump also, but I'll keep them ahead of Edmonton for the time being. At number four, Winnipeg, they find a way to win. At the end of the day, that's all that matters. You get the W, you you live to see another day, you play on the next week, you find out, you play the next team the next week, you scratch that one, you take the win, you get up out of there. 
Number three, Toronto, six and four. Chad Kelly's back, and that makes a freaking difference. The receivers, the whole game. David Ungerer is back. He's making plays. Cox, he's, he's making plays. Just a whole – you already know their defense is – they're going to force turnovers. They're going to make plays. They're going to make you think. They're going to put the, – they're going to take the ball away. And all you need is a, a, comp, a quarterback to complement that. And Toronto's back in the swing of things. Okay, Chad Kelly. At number two, Ottawa, 7-2-1, playing well. I can't hate. I'm, I'm – I'm on. I'm, I almost wore my Ottawa jersey for this show because I'm. I'm loving what they're doing. Shout out to Coach Dice. Number one, the champs, Montreal. None other. None other. So as we're gonna do right now, we're gonna dive into next segment. Nick picks for this week. I would talk about last week picks, picks, but I don't feel like doing it. Go back and watch and see what I said, and see if I made good picks or not. And then we're going to ride on for this week. Hey, use the code BET99. You're going to get, they're going to help you up to $1,500 of bet backs and all those type of things that's good for you. Just use the code. It's right there. I mean, that's what I would do. But, hey, if you are going to do it, gamble responsibly. These are Nick's picks. You don't have to rock with it, but. Just my experience being in the CFL. This is what I think is going to happen this week. This is the best league. Last week, all the games, all four games were separated by a total of 14 points. That's how close this league is. And that's how important knowing the small things or doing the small things matter in this league because it goes from those those things are what wins you the game. because. You only get this much of of a room to make a mistake in this league. So we're gonna dive into this week game and we're gonna start off Labor Day weekend with um who got the first game? Ottawa and BC. They play each other again. I'm just gonna take I'm gonna take I'm I'm done betting against Ottawa. I'm taking Ottawa, and I'm taking them for the win. Matter of fact, no, I'm taking Ottawa plus 3.5. I'm taking the points, 3.5. Um, next game, Winnipeg and SAS. Winnipeg has only beaten SAS in SAS one time in the last few years. Um, maybe it was way more than that. I remember the one time they did win, and it was by the hair of the chinny chin chin. I was literally there. Um, Saz probably should have won that game. So, um, Winnipeg's been playing good. Saz's been falling off, but that game is always just a tough one. Give me um, Saz to win that game on um, money line. Next game is on Monday, Labor Day. We have Toronto at Hamilton. I'm just going to take the money line, Toronto, to win that game. The next game, we got Edmonton and Calgary. Calgary gets it done at home. Money line them, just take that. We're not going to mess with the points in that game. It's rivalry week, a lot of emotions. This one of those, this is the week when as a coach, you ain't got to go in there and give them no raw, raw freaking speech. Everybody pisses hot. They are ready to go. You ain't, I don't need to hear sh from you, coach. I don't need to hear nothing. We ready to roll, man. I've been ready to roll since day three of practice. Day two of practice. Uh, Anybody I see in the opposite color for this rivalry week, when it goes to the Battle of Alberta, when it goes to Sask and, and Winnipeg, when it goes to uh, Ontario, of uh, uh, we got um, Hamilton versus Toronto, you ain't got to say shit to me this week, coach. <laughs> I'm ready to go from the start. And if you ain't ready to go this week, then you shouldn't have on your fucking pads. You shouldn't. You go stay home this week. Because this is the week. And if you ain't a player ready to go this week, don't even be around me. I don't want to hear no play play stuff this week. We ready to bust ass. And we putting our foot down because for the most part, everybody's playing the next team, the same teams back to back. So we want to come out here 
and let them know from the get go. Hey, this gonna happen this week, and when I see your ass next week, it's gonna happen again. What? Be ready. So that's what we got for um, next picks. Let's dive into my favorite part, man. Cause this means you bought. That means you was up. You did your thing this week, man. This is Nick's O Canada O Canada player of the week. Um, shout out Cole Speaker, man. Big game. But not going to him this week. We're going to Drew Brown. Um, balled out 28 for 39, 390 yards, throwing, throwing all over BC defense. Um, three touchdowns. Um, got his receivers all involved. Hardy, Mardner, he got a couple touchdowns. So shout out to Drew Brown. Keep doing what you're doing. I knew you was gonna be a baller. Seen it in practice. You know you my guy. I ain't gonna say how we be, how we talk to each other, but I see you this year balling out. Keep doing what you're doing. Lead Ottawa. Continue to lead Ottawa, man. I love it to see it, man. You got your chance, and you're making the most of it. Um, on the defensive side, Montreal. Jeffrey Canton Arcou. He was a pest. He was a menace. He had two sacks, five tackles, and a tackle on special teams, man. Um, ball out, young man. I see you, man. Um, part of that defense that gave up zero points in the second half and helped lead the team back to the win. So that's what we got for Knicks. Oh, Canada. Oh, Canada player of the week. No need to sing the song. Rudy's not here. So no Oh, Canada. I know Oh, Canada song this week. Um, that's what we got for this week of Come On CFL. I also, my last remarks is, this is a big week that NFL players are being released and players are coming back. Austin Mack came back last week and he signed back with Montreal. Just got a big deal. He deserved it. The guy that's out there is Matthew Betts. Defensive player of the year last year. 18 sacks, three forced fumbles, 44 tackles on special teams. Just a, a, a insane motor that you probably will never, you won't see from many players. But this guy never gets tired. He's constantly pressuring the quarterback. He's in the face all day. He's a little, I won't say dirty, but he plays right on the line. But you need that feistiness, and BC needs that back. But I don't know with everything that's going on with their locker at locker room right now. I don't know if Matthew Best want to come back. I don't know if they can afford to bring him back right now, just because looking at you know what's going on with their quarterback payroll right now. But that's somebody they need to get back on their defense to get them some turnovers, get them some shorter fields, get the momentum going back for the BC Lions, who's right now letting the Grey Cup in their own city slip away. That's somebody to look out for. Don't know. Maybe he gets stolen away like, like Winnipeg did uh, Willie Jefferson, and he's a big pickup for another team. Maybe the Winnipeg, him and Willie J, after losing Jackson Jeffcoat. Whew, that would be scary. I don't... Ooh. Or, you know, there's some other teams out there that could use him, and they're going to be offering a bag. I don't know if he's he's a free agent, so I don't, I'm pretty sure that BC doesn't have his rights. So that's going to be – keep your eye out on that. That's the big thing on this upcoming week. Does he get picked up by another NFL team? If he doesn't, he's back. And who gets him could be a big, big, big reason – a team makes a run to the Great Cup this year. So that's all I got for Come On CFL this week. Keep supporting, man. Um, hit that, that, that subscribe button. Watch the show. Share, 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 share. Trying to bring some more eyes to the CFL. I think this is the best football league in, a, in, in the world. I think so. I think it's funner than the NFL. I think all when all three phases matter, when you need the offense to work, the defense to work, and the special teams to work, I think that's that makes the game interesting. It makes it fun because 
Nobody could be a downfall and get get away with it. And the NFL is a slower game. I in the CFL, I think everything matters. It's a quicker game. Um and they have a lot of rules that make the game a lot more exciting once you understand it. Ultimately, this week we had the Rouge was a big thing. And it's been around in the CFL forever. I don't have a problem with it. It's what make because it makes special teams interesting. And it's been around for forever. And like I said, if Saz had a problem with it, the league y'all have a problem with it. Saz, get a first down, get two first downs and get them, get Toronto out of field goal range where he could kick the ball and miss it and then go out the back of the end zone. But if we can change the rules, we do change the rules all the time. What we can do, one adjustment to that would be if the ball goes out of play, you don't get a point. But if the ball lands in play, you have to bring the ball out of the end zone or you get a point. Even if it lands, you no, know, as long as it lands in play, it could bounce out after. But if it lands in play and then it goes out of bounds, then the rules is all good. So that play right there, I would have it where once he kicked it out and it's unreturnable, it doesn't even land in the field of play, then you get nothing for it. So that incentivized. Well, that changes it. So it won't just get a, a, a point just for everything. You get points for it if the team doesn't bring it out. And we should keep it that way. That's the only thing I'll change about that rule would be the rules on how to to go about it. But I don't have a problem with it at all. Because if you've got a problem with it, like I say, don't get the other team. It's a, CFL is a field position game. Don't let the other team get in field position. Simple as that. And that's all I got for this week. Come on, CFL, man. Y'all hit that follow button, man. Tune in next week. Tune in this week. Share, share, share. Enjoy this Labor Day week. It's going to be a good one. All right, man. That's all I got for y'all. Peace out.